Hello there. Welcome to the Saroy channel. Lots of love to each and every one of you. I do hope you're doing well. I'm doing fabulous, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to sharing this lovely story with you tonight. But before we get started, don't forget to get that perfect drink for yourself, whether you're enjoying something alcoholic, something refreshing and light, something warm and comforting. Go and get it because I've got a fabulous story. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell and the thumbs up. And let's get started with tonight's story. Dear Sarah and all your lovely listeners, my name is Ian and I believe without a shadow of a doubt that my grandmother was killed by a Bigfoot. Of course at the time no one really knew that such a creature actually existed and when my grandmother complained that she had been harassed and stalked by a hairy humanoid ape in the woods, no one really believed her strange account. My grandmother was a very truthful woman so no one for a second thought that she was lying. But as is often the case with Bigfoot sightings, the sceptics invariably always bring the inevitable, it could have been a bear, to the table. I believe, as is always the case, with people who come forward to share their amazing Bigfoot accounts, that when they're ridiculed, disbelieved and dismissed, the first thing they do is shut up and keep quiet. I truly think that that is what ultimately happened with my grandmother, who bit her lip in anguish because no one understood the dreadful palpable fear that she was going through on a daily basis. No one believed her account, and so she lived with a tormented secret that ultimately ended up leading to her own demise. So let me tell you my extraordinary story and why I came to the ultimate conclusion that my grandmother may have been killed by a Bigfoot, or at the very least fought the creature off as hard as she could and was accidentally mortally injured. I made this discovery in 1987 all by accident, so it was a long time ago now. It all started when my grandfather, who was a robust 83-year-old man at the time and still in remarkably good health, decided to move into a retirement home. He relinquished his estate to me before his death as he wanted to avoid all the inevitable tax duties that come from a deceased estate. As you can imagine, I was thrilled because my grandfather lived on 400 acres of pristine land in West Virginia in a very beautiful, enchanting 1800s farmhouse that had been completely restored and renovated 20 years earlier and since then had been fastidiously well maintained and kept in almost perfect condition. The house was situated on the end of a very large red dirt road with a grassy embankment on either side. At the end of the road was a huge iron cattle gate which opened up into another red dirt road lined with very old majestic tall oak trees on either side. That ultimately led up to the beautiful house. This rustic farmhouse was situated on a very large elevated grassy clearing that stretched out for a fair bit. My grandfather had transformed that area into a beautiful yard with flower beds and vegetable patches. On the western side of the property were both outhouses and stables. There was also grazing fields for horses and cows. The house was north facing and the area in front of the house stretched back for miles with spectacular panoramic views over green blue rolling hills and thick dense green forests. On the eastern side of our land was a beautiful silvery lake and several hundred yards from the lake was a large wooded area filled with an abundance of wildlife from deers, rabbits, hogs, squirrels and you name it, pretty much anything and everything. Luckily moving into my dad's property was not a major upheaval for all of us because we luckily lived locally, just a few miles away from him in a rented bungalow. So we pretty much could move in straight away and that is invariably exactly what we did, much to the delight of my family, especially my children, Paula who was 16 and Larry who was 18 at the time. We wasted no time in settling into our new home and throwing out many of the things we would no longer need like grandmother's old clothes and personal effects 
that my grandfather had never got to throw away after she had died, due to sentimental reasons. I think he felt so lost after she had died, and he could not bring himself to get rid of any of her stuff. I had several bin liners open over the gleaming oakwood floor, and I was just piling everything in them without discrimination. I've always hated and loathed clutter, but my grandparents had been great at hoarding pretty much everything, and always stuff that they inevitably never got to use. I was pulling stuff off the shelf above the hanging rack in the closet, along with cobwebs and dust, and I retrieved an old shoebox filled with crumpled pieces of paper that had never been discarded. It looked like letters that my grandmother had tried to write, but she had crumpled up the paper in her frustration and never completed the letter. I knew what that was like. I had never been good at writing letters myself, and often went through an entire pad of writing paper before I was finally happy with what I'd written. I smiled to myself as I started to slide the shoebox into the rubbish bag, thinking that maybe my grandmother had more in common with me than I realised. Suddenly something stopped me in my tracks, and I retrieved the box and started to unroll the papers and read them. To this day, I just do not know what made me do this. My grandmother had been attempting to write to her brother Billy, who lived in Houston in Texas. I had only ever met him once or twice, and he was a really lovely man. I read some of the attempted letters that she had tried to write to him, and this one got my attention. It read, Dear darling Billy, I do not know what to do. I am at the end of my tether. I believe I'm in very big trouble. Every day, I'm being stalked by a hairy ape-like man. I don't expect you to believe me, but I promise you it's true. I saw him in the woods once, and since then, I think he's been following me. In fact, I don't just think it, I know it. I feel certain that he's watching me all the time and I'm so afraid to venture out of doors. I told Rolf and even Mother about what I'd seen, and they believe I saw a bear or something else, and that my eyes were playing tricks on me. I know what I saw, and it wasn't a bear. It was very definitely an ape-man. I confided in my friend Bess, who is a devout Catholic, and told her what I'd seen. She is convinced I saw a demon and told me that I clearly needed to repent of my sins. And I've done all that. I've prayed, and I've even rebuked the thing, and it's still out there, still spying on me. So none of that stuff has worked. I think that this thing is not a spiritual being, but a very physical creature. But I've no idea what it is. But I truly feel as if my life is in impending danger, because this creature appears to be fixated by me. He has a very nasty smell about him, and he's very, very tall and very wide, and he has a very big ape-like face. But it's those intense eyes that scare me half to death. I wonder if you could move here for a while from Houston and help me to show my husband Ralph and the others that I'm not imagining what I'm seeing. And this thing is indeed real. I need them to believe me. This was the longest letter I found that was scrunched up in the box. In those days, I had never heard of Bigfoot, but it did seem incredibly odd that my grandmother was rattling on about an ape man living in the woods. I decided to keep the crumpled note and asked my grandfather about it when I visited him at his retirement home. On the day I visited my grandfather at the old age home, I was surprised to find that he had acquired a girlfriend, and he had a very happy sparkle in his pale brown eyes. There was life in the old dog yet. His willowy, frail, elderly friend looked strangely familiar, and I remembered that she had dated my grandfather a few times, long after my grandmother's death, and had even stayed over at the farmhouse a few times. The relationship had ultimately fizzled out, but now it seemed that they had rekindled the old flame, and they both looked as if they were really very much in love, or at least extremely fond of each other. Pops, I said, 
That's what I always called my grandfather. I want to ask you something very private. Nonsense, said my grandfather, holding his girlfriend's hand tightly. I have no secrets from Rosie. Spit it out, son. It's about Grandma, I said. Go on, said my grandfather. I found an old crumpled, half-written letter that Granny attempted to write to her brother. But she never sent it to him. In it she talks about an ape-man that she believed was a threat to her safety. Oh! That, said my grandfather. That's nothing, son. I think her mind was playing tricks on her. There was no ape-man in the woods. She had a big imagination. But I told her that and she wouldn't listen. She was as stubborn as a mule. She was convinced she was seeing a, an ape-like creature. But I told her that she was very definitely wrong. Did you say ape-man? said Rosie, looking startled. I saw him too. What? said my grandfather. Where did you see him? That time when we were dating for a while at your home. Remember the time I spent the odd weekend at your place? I saw the ape-man then. The blood had drained from my grandfather's face, and he looked at Rosalie intently with his steely blue eyes. You really saw an ape-man? he asked. On my property? Rosie nodded, and tears poured down her pale blue eyes and down her wrinkled, pale, thin face. Now, now, it's all right, said my grandfather. Why did you not tell me about this? Because you would never have believed me. You don't even believe that your wife saw the thing. I can hardly believe it. I saw it myself, so why would you believe me? I do now, said my grandfather. If two people say they saw the same thing, then it's good enough for me. What did the ape man do? I asked Rosie. I got the impression he wanted me to see him. He was making himself known to me. He wasn't hiding away. He was looking at me through the bedroom window. And he was huge. But it was those eyes. Oh, they gave me the creeps. There was something so sinister about them. Their intensity and the way it was looking at me. It was just so scary. How many times did you see him, Rosie? I asked. It was only the once. But I always felt when I was at your place that... This thing was watching me all the time. I know I couldn't see him, but I felt it. It's hard to explain. You just get a sense about these things. I didn't like staying at your place. If you will remember, I started to decline some of your invitations because I could feel this thing around me and he was horrible. He would grunt and he had a horrible smell. A little bit like wet dog and skunk mixed together. Tell me, Pops, how did Gran die? I asked suddenly. It was twenty years ago, son. It was all an accident. And that is it. There was nothing suspicious about it at all. Well, let me see about that. Tell me exactly what happened, I asked. Try and remember. Well, I remember it was a Sunday night. And do you remember Delilah? Oh, you mean the white fluffy dog that you once owned? That's right. Very nice dog, too. Loved your grandmother to bits. Followed her everywhere. Devoted he was. What about Delilah? I asked. What has grandmother's dog got to do with her passing? Well, she went missing, you see. Very strange it was, because it was so out of character for her to wander off like that. Well, you know, your grandmother couldn't understand it. She was fixated about that dog. Oh, she insisted on going off to find him. And it was dark outside. I told her not to. I tried to discourage her, but you know what she was like. Stubborn as a mule. She insisted. Well, why didn't you go with her? I asked, looking at my grandfather in horror. I thought she was going outside into the yard. I wasn't to know that she would go wandering off into the woods all on her own. Your grandmother always had a mind of her own. You mean she went to the woods by herself, all in the dark? I asked in surprise. It would seem so. Well, that's where they found her body. What did the coroner say was the reason for her death? Grandpa, I asked. 
Oh, they said she must have hit her head very hard and broken her neck. It was an accident. These things happen, son, especially if you're foolish enough to go tumbling around in the darkness like that. If you ask me, you're asking for trouble. Your grandmother was very foolish. I'm not sure about that, Pops. I think her death is highly questionable. I really do. How do you know that this ape man didn't actually harm her? You think this thing killed her? Asked my grandfather in horror. I do, Pops. I really do, I said. I mean, Granny felt her life was in danger. I handed my grandfather the note my gran had written, expressing her fear about the ape man. My grandfather read the note, and his grave face looked very solemn. I had no idea she felt this way, he said, looking very reflective. I rarely think I failed your poor grandmother. After her death, Delilah was never the same dog again. You know, she never left the house. She spent her life curled up in your grandmother's closet. She was always very anxious. It was very, very sad. When I returned home that evening, I was wondering what on earth this humanoid ape actually was, and if this creature or others like him presented a possible threat to my own family now that I was actually living on my grandfather's land. Was this thing still alive, I wondered, because if he was, both my wife and daughter could be in danger, because he clearly had a fixation on woman. I never told my wife about my concerns, but I searched the woods on my land thoroughly and covered every area by foot, carrying my Remington rifle with me at all times, but I never encountered the strange creature. I assumed that he, or whatever he was, had moved on or was deceased. I truly hoped the latter was the case, and it was plausible because I doubt apes have the same kind of life expectancy as a human, but then I don't really know. Several years went by. My grandfather had passed away by then, and so had his lovely girlfriend Rosie. One day when I was out hunting in the woods with a friend of mine on the deer stand that I had constructed in the woods a couple of years earlier, we noticed that the forest had become airily quiet, and we knew that we were not alone. I could sense something was watching us, and my friend Hank was looking very anxious and extremely unnerved. It was the creepiest, most sinister feeling that I've ever encountered in my life. We watched a couple of little saplings swaying vigorously, and we could hear the sound of something hefty in the undergrowth. We knew at once that this creature, whatever it was, had to be enormous, and both Hank and I were both immobilised by total fear, and stood on the deer stand like a couple of ice statues, frozen to the spot and literally unable to move. That is the effect the presence had on us. I wanted to run away, but my legs felt like heavy blocks of solid concrete, and I could tell that Hank was worse off than I was, because there were beads of sweat pouring down his face like raindrops, and his terrified eyes were as wide as saucers. And this, we hadn't even seen the creature yet. Suddenly we saw the head of a very large black beast, with a monstrous ape-like face staring at us with dark menacing eyes through the undergrowth at about eight feet off the ground. And it was the most terrifying thing that I have ever seen or encountered in my entire life. It was like I was looking at a movie. It was so surreal. I wanted to fire at the thing, but my 270 Remington rifle felt like a BB gun in my hands, and I was sure I would probably make this thing so mad and put both Hank and I in mortal danger, and I didn't want that to happen. The creature was making strange grunting sounds that sounded like a primate, and although we never saw his entire body, his movements in the brush reminded me of a massive ape. This thing, whatever it was, kept studying us through the curtain of shrubbery, with a steely gaze like a great bird of prey that scans the ground looking for a potential snack. That was the kind of look he was giving us. Suddenly we heard another grunting sound coming from further away, and I remember thinking to myself, oh my goodness, not another one, and in that moment of startling revelation, I shat my pants in utter terror. In that second, Hank just passed out and fainted,
falling onto the ground in a semi-conscious state. The creature suddenly lost interest in us as he appeared to be distracted by his friend's call and suddenly he just turned around and thundered through the undergrowth like a bulldozer rampaging through the thicket. I immediately did my best to revive Hank and we both went home but we could not run because the energy had drained from both of us and it was all we could do to just crawl home. On reflection, I do not know whether the creature was going to hurt us or not, because it never growled at us, no, not once. But those eyes were just so intimidating, and this creature was formidable. I have never felt so overwhelmed by terror in my entire life, because we were quite literally facing an apex predator. I still live on my lovely plot of land, and go hunting from time to time. But I have learnt to listen to my instincts, and I will always turn away from a hunting expedition if the woods grow unusually quiet and the bird song recedes. When it's like that, I know at that time to get out of the forest. From time to time, when it's dark outside, I do hear whooping sounds and wood knocks coming from the valley. And all these years later, I know that they're coming from these creatures. If I'd not known any better, it would have been impossible to believe in the existence of such an extraordinary apex predator that is as elusive and as potentially dangerous as this one invariably is. I still believe my grandmother was killed by the Bigfoot, and I often wonder whether the missing dog was a roux by the creature to lure my grandmother into the woods late at night. I think these creatures are highly intelligent, and so it would seem like a pretty clever plan. It would have been the most perfect setup. Judging by my grandfather's accounts, that little mutt was clearly spooked by something. Maybe the creature had no intention of ham harming my grandmother, because he was clearly fixated by her like a stalker with a very serious crush. So it could have been an accident if my grandmother had fought back, and I imagine she would have, to her detriment. I will never know what actually caused her death, but the one thing I feel sure of is that the hairy man ultimately had something to do with it. You may, of course, disagree with me, but that's my story. Well, I just want to thank you so very much for that amazing story. And I do think that it's highly possible that the dog was used as a roux by the Bigfoot because it does seem to me that he had a fixation on women. He clearly had a fixation on the grandfather's new girlfriend when she went to stay at the property. So that really leads me to suspect that he must have been fascinated by women and probably wanted to kidnap one. And he probably tried to kidnap the grandmother and then failed to do so. And as a result, she died fighting. That's what I actually think happened, but you might think differently. Until next time, goodbye and good night.